let's start off at Slough. The van man is a vital link between the railway and its customers, and he can really help in making good relations and efficient working. And because he takes care of the beginning and the end of a parcel's journey, he can make sure that the job both starts right and finishes right. Arranging parcels in the van in delivery order can save a lot of pushing and shoving and also mileage if a parcel has been overlooked and the van has to go back with it. If he's at a busy station, he won't always be able to check in detail every package as loaded, but he should at least make a bulk count of the load and look through his delivery sheets. The van man must see that the package he collects agree with the entries on the cart bill. A single box may be worth as much as a hundred pounds, and the driver's signature, whether he actually got the box or not, makes the railway responsible and liable for it. The van man should also see that the parcels he collects are in a fit state to travel. Now, here's the kind of situation a van man meets. The bag is in exceptionally bad condition. Does he refuse to accept it or accept it and let it take its chance? Well, this is what this driver did. First, he explained what the problem was. Then he gave the woman a card to put her name and address on for putting inside the case. Then he got a length of cord from his cab and helped her make it secure. The whole business took only a few minutes. It's way beyond what the vanman was required to do, but if we want more traffic, this is the kind of attitude which will help to get it. Once a driver gets back with his load, it's to his own advantage if he can check the parcels off the van against the cart bills. At this time, he'll also draw attention to such things as anything of a highly vulnerable or special nature and brought back parcels, and hand in any cash from collections he might have made. The van man has his problems, traffic, parking, one-way streets and policemen, but he's a most important link in the chain. And the efficiency with which he carries out his duties in collection and delivery makes all the difference to the way the whole system works. This is the parcels office at Manchester Central. All day and half the night, the public file by sending off anything from a tin of maggots to a ton of tomatoes. And while, of course, the customer is always right, the general public is nearly as varied as the parcels they're sending off. Some seem to give up all hope on entering and resign themselves to the worst. And then there's the odd one who will rush in a minute before the train is due out and expect everyone to stand clear so that he can get his parcel on it. If they don't, he will complain loudly that the railway has never been the same since nationalisation. Luckily, they are few and far between, and there are plenty of people who it is a real pleasure to serve. But whatever the customers are like, the man on the counter is the representative of the railway, and it's up to him to handle them with skill and tact. But more important still, the clerk accepts on behalf of the railway the responsibility for carrying the parcel. And once again, if this stage is properly carried out, it starts the job off right. The first operation on any parcel is to check the labelling, and second-hand cartons often spell trouble. Even with a simple job such as this, there's a right and a wrong way of doing it. If it's done like this, by turning it round and round until you have checked the four sides, then the top and the bottom, you can't miss a side, which is what often happens if it is done without a system. And there you are. The label at the top is to Northampton, the one on the bottom to Glazebury. If address labels were carefully examined at all stages, it would save many parcels from being wrongly rooted and possibly lost. Next is to see that an article which needs a consignment note has one, and the correct one at that. In this case, it is owner's risk, and make certain that the sender signs it. If there is no signature, the note is not valid. If staff dealing with the acceptance of traffic have all the information at their fingertips and really know the regulations, everything will work much more easily. In the long run, the easiest way to do a job is to do it right. 
A parcel will get quickly and safely to its destination if each small operation along its journey is done correctly. If the ledger label or stamp is pasted on so that it slightly overlaps the top right-hand corner of the destination label, it will help to protect the parcel against theft. Likewise, a livestock label may stop a box being put against the heating pipes in a van and preserve the life of a pigeon or some day-old chicks. Except when there is a note, the only record of a parcel is the counter sheet, and the better the sheets are kept, the easier it will be for accounting, for checking if anything does go wrong, and of course for the clerk when it comes to balloting up at the end of the day. If all sheets were as well written and as neat and tidy as this one, there wouldn't be much trouble, and it's most important to give details when they're called for. If a bicycle has a lamp, pump, or carrier bag, don't forget to note them on the sheet. And of course, the other columns on the sheet must be filled up as required. Another mystery about parcels is how anyone could expect some of them to get anywhere without falling to pieces. And it's not only the public who try to send badly packed parcels. Some business firms are just as bad. If it's not too bad, it probably can be retied on the spot. If it's beyond hope, you can point out that it's in the customer's own interest to repack, and a tactful approach will often work wonders. There's not much difference between booking traffic at the counter and booking traffic brought in by the motorman. It is an equally important point in a parcel's journey, and another place to start right. Kerr here can save all sorts of trouble later. Clear calling off saves time and mistakes. The number of the ledger label must be called to make sure that the number recorded on the cart bill is the same as on the ledger label on the parcel, and each item must be checked against the cart bill. Weighing instructions will vary from place to place, but as the carriage charge in most cases is based upon the weight of the parcel, it is important that the correct weight information is available. Where zone numbering is in operation, the number must be put close to the destination label and always the same way up. If numbers like 6 and 9 aren't written the same way up as the label, they're bound to be misread and the parcel will be off course right at the start of its travels. Here we are at Slough again. Let's have a look at one or two further points about the parcels office. When TCF traffic is of a perishable nature and is not called for quickly, it's up to the parcels office staff to let the traders know so that they can collect. But it's also a good idea to do this with other TCF traffic as well. In these days of competition from the roads, anything which can be done to improve air service and air relations with traders will be to our advantage. Second-hand cartons are bad enough when it comes to conflicting labels and they're only used for two or three journeys. A suitcase or a trunk over the years can be used for scores and often its owners will take a pride in having as many labels as possible, little thinking of the confusion they cause. Far too much baggage goes astray through unsatisfactory labeling and in the end it's no good blaming the senders Someone on the railway accepted it in the first place and failed to check the labels. The owner may not thank you for crossing out the old labels, but at least her trunk will be waiting for her at her destination. Almost the first thing a parcel meets on its rail journey is a barrow, and here we come to keeping the job right. If a barrow is properly loaded, no matter how rough the ground it has to cross, its load will stay secure. If it's not, this is bound to happen. If you're standing in a van when unloading, it's worth remembering that you're a foot above the ground and that the load is that much higher from the platform. With mixed and awkward traffic such as this, it's just asking for trouble if you stack too much on. You may be in a hurry, or it may seem too much trouble to start a second barrow, but it'll be much easier on you and the parcels if you do. There's nothing very complicated about loading a barrow properly provided just a little care and common sense is used. The main thing is to pay attention to what a package is and treat it as such. 
You may say that if you're handling hundreds of parcels a day, you can't give each one of them individual attention, but you can, and most parcel workers do. They don't pick up a box and say, ah, a box of glass, I must handle it carefully. They do it instinctively as a matter of course and common sense. In loading parcels on barrows or in vans, it's going to make it very much easier for everyone if they're stacked the right way up with the labels facing out. During the course of a year, a porter may handle two or three hundred thousand parcels. If he has to turn each one over to find the label, it means an awful lot of extra work. Barrowing is just one of the details along the way. Care and common sense can keep it a detail and not turn it into a problem. The next stage in keeping right is the general care and handling of traffic. And we are going to Manchester and Slough. It rains at both. Rain is not usually a very big problem with parcels traffic. In most places, the work is done inside or under adequate canopies. But on some stations, which have not over much space, the sorting has to be done on the platform, and care should be taken to get the barrels in out of the rain as soon as possible. Every day, numbers of parcels are lost or delayed through the labels coming off or being damaged. Senders are bad enough at labelling without us making things worse. And if boxes are dragged across one another, labels are bound to get torn. Luggage of all types should be treated as fragile, and throwing things on a platform in full view of the public is as good a way as any to get people to send their stuff by road. A parcel which is torn or damaged is likely to get worse as it moves from point to point. A parcel of screws will scatter its contents along the way. A torn parcel of textiles exposes its contents to damage and pilferage. Every office should have repairing material and a little kindly attention to damaged parcels really pays. Every parcel we carry is of value to someone. The sender may have spent hours or days making it or growing it. The person receiving it may have spent hard-earned cash to buy it or be waiting to sell it in his shop, or use it in a factory or hospital. If goods are handled badly, think of the disappointment, the irritation it will cause, and the repercussions on us. Not only in terms of claims, but in terms of loss of prestige, and finally, in loss of traffic. Livestock should always have special attention, because apart from the suffering which can be caused, many of the animals are very valuable. With some animals, it's a kindness to give them a drink of water. If they're in boxes, do it with care, for there has been more than one animal which has got away at this point. And, of course, with goats and such like, it's a good idea not to tie them too close to one another so that they don't eat each other's labels. Finally, never put anything on top of boxes of livestock. Now let's have a look at security, a most important stage in keeping the job right. Incoming traffic should be cleared from platforms as soon as possible, and vulnerable traffic should never be left lying about unprotected. If traffic has to wait for trains, full use should be made of cages and adapted rooms. But where there aren't any, it should be left in a position where the staff can keep an eye on it. A simple gadget like a net will protect goods from most sneak thieves, who will draw the line at the added risk of having to lift the net but it's even better if the net is properly tied to the barrel. Finally, a few points on loading and unloading vans. Even in a well-lit van, it's surprising how easy it is for a parcel to be overlooked and left behind. If the van is dark, as they often are, it's impossible to see if anything has been left behind just by a quick look round from the door. If portable lights are available, it's a help but in any case, a proper inspection should be made of every van on completion of unloading. And it's surprising how big an article can be brought to light. If a parcel is left in a van, it can mean delay running into days. If it's perishable traffic like fish, it can mean loss as well. Traffic varies from station to station, and some of it calls for special treatment. One station sends off thousands of boxes of cake a day, and if it's a fine day at all, the doors are opened early in the day and the vans are given a thorough airing. If the vans have had strong-smelling goods in them, it saves any risk of contamination. And if they've had to stand all day in the hot sun, it keeps them cool. 
Whatever the traffic, the van has got to be clean. On the whole, parcel vans don't collect much dirt, but if a van needs it, it should be given a thorough sweeping. You may feel that a lot of these small points are too obvious and that it's a case of teaching your grandmother to suck eggs. But remember, if every detail was seen to, all the traffic would be getting safely to its destination, which it doesn't at the moment. Anyway, many vans do have conflicting names chalked all over them, and it's a cause of parcels going astray. It's quicker and safer to have a thorough clean-up with a wet rag than it is to try and clean the space with the side of your hand. And on the outside, a clearly printed van label with full details on it and care taken to see that the clip is really holding on both sides and you have a van that is in the right condition to start loading. And now, stowing. How many times have we opened a door and had this happen? This type of stowing, or throwing might be a more accurate description, not only causes damage and parcels to be missed at intermediate stations, it also takes up twice the space and often an extra van has to be used. It doesn't matter about the first few parcels in a van, but the sooner they're straightened out and put in their own sections, the better. In general, it's better to avoid stowing on shelves. Parcels are always left behind on them. But in this case, the staff know from experience that the van will end up full. The main thing is to see that the right parcel goes in the right section and that the sections are kept clear of each other. It is, of course, essential to keep the brake handles free and also to see that nothing is stowed too close to heating pipes and heaters. There are problems, volume of traffic, time involved and so on. But if the stowing of every van was as well started as this one, it would reduce the number of parcels delayed and make the work of unloading at intermediate and main destination stations quicker and easier and improve the timekeeping of trains. In a year, we handle over a hundred million parcels. Most of them get there safe and sound, due to the care and attention of the men on the job. The driver, the clerk, the checker, the porter, and the foreman. There is a small percentage of failures, and if we could reduce this further, it'd help not only to retain traffic, but increase it. The way to do this is to start right, keep right, and finish right. <laughs>